Hello fellow YouTubers sitting out on my patio and I'm uh, just enjoying the, the nice weather that we are having here. It's awesome. So uh, this is going to be entitled Storytime Part 5. I had originally recorded Part uh, 5, 6, and even 7. And the issue with those uh, three or four that I recorded, um, they were over 15 minutes, just bought all of them, so I wasn't able to upload them. So this is part five, and continuation of Storytime Part Four. Storytime Part Four, I was telling you about, uh, you know, coming up, and I told you in previous parts about being sick when I was in the eighth grade. Uh, I had a bowel obstruction, couldn't hold food down, and I was out of school for, uh, it must have been over about two months. And during that time period, I did a whole lot of practicing, and that year I made, I tried out for all region, and when I tried out for all region, I made second man first year. So out of about 30 or 40 uh, baritone players that were trying out, I was number five in our region, which was a significant achievement being that I've never had, at that time I'd never had any lessons or, uh, you know, other than group construction and band class. So, uh, you know, last time I, when I left off, I was telling you about uh, that you know, after I made the second man first year that I said, next year I'm going to make first man first. And uh, the interesting thing about having said that, your words have power and meaning. That's what I want to say. So when I said that, it was it planted a seed and that gave me an opportunity um, to see seeds to that. Um, I did what I did the year before. I would like to say, you know. I just practiced 24-7, I, I didn't, I, I was not allowed to take my instrument home during the summer, and so when when I came back to school, uh, you know, she kind of told us eventually about all region, and she did what she did before, this is Miss Wilcox, she gave me uh, the instrument, uh, of course, like I was saying, but then also the uh, music, and then also uh, a tape of someone demonstrating music and that was invaluable because I could hear what was expected of me and I, at that age I was good at imitating so I would just take the music and use it as a guideline but basically I had the music memorized and I tried out and I think I, if you remember I said that I would learn the required scales at the audition, you know, I didn't know any better, so that's what I did. I learned the required skills at the audition, which is not a good way to audition for all state, all region, that kind of thing, but that's what I did because I didn't know any better. And so, uh, I said in the last video, I probably played the exercise or the requirement perfect, and I did. I, you know, because I just memorized it basically I had it down perfect and you know I guess I even though it was an improper method to <laughs> to be prepared for the you know the, the scales I probably did pretty good on the scales that year and the, I'm pretty sure the sight reading was a disaster but uh, somehow or another based on my prepared piece based on my scales I made first band first trip I was the very best uh, euphonium player in our district uh, at that time. And that was my ninth grade year. So uh, I was pretty excited about that opportunity and I remember, uh, you know, getting a chance to play all the solos if there were any solos and uh, just being challenged being in the, the first band. It was, uh, it was a great band. And in the 10th grade year, I was to go to high school and it, my band director in high school, her name is Karen Disney. Uh, she taught at North Alaska High School, uh, I think over two decades. Uh, 
she started there around about 1991, and I think her last year was 2010, maybe 2012, somewhere around there. So she taught a long time in, at the same school, and we had trophies all the way around the building. She was she was a great band director. Uh, but there was this uh, other euphonic player who was you know he was he was good you know and all that and she took me on the side and she said you do know now this is when I went to 10th grade she said you do know that uh, I think his name was Elliot his name was Elliot Brett he's some kind of engineer now he was really really smart and she said you know Elliot you know he's he's, he's pretty good you know you're you're in the 10th grade now he's in the 11th so the chances of you pretty much being uh, first chair like you were at Northwood is kind of, you know, kind of low. So I said, well, I'll do my best. And uh, they decided what chair you would be based on your all-region uh, placement. Because we had our marching man and, you know, he was a section leader and so uh, I just basically had to follow his leadership section leader so I just kind of followed and you know she's been telling me all this time you know there's a, there's a big strong chance that uh, you know you won't be the section leader you won't be first chair and uh, that year I believe he made second band second chair or something like that I made first band second oh that was hilarious because uh you know, when you, when you had the number one chair person have to move down, those of you who played in band class, you know what I'm talking about. When uh, the first chair player is ousted, and he, he has to move down. So he had to move down. And as you know, it's never over. You know, he challenged me all the time. We'd have weak playoffs, and I would see the music, and I would say, oh, he's probably going to challenge me on that particular piece. And uh, he never got his chair back. And I'm particularly proud about that, not saying that I'm, you know, anything, but I just recognize that, uh, you know, I wanted to be the best in all three high school. I was first chair euphonic. From uh, spring, uh, I think that was 1991. From spring of 1991, all the way until I graduated, spring 1994, I was the uh, section leader in first year. And so, uh, in my high school years, I made first band first. I mean, first band, well, if you count ninth grade high school, I made first band first, first band second. And uh, it was kind of funny because there was this uh, very talented euphonium player. He went to Parkview High School. I don't know what he's doing now, but he was, he was pretty, uh, he was, he, I think he was all state on the, on the cello. He did orchestra and band. And he was his class valedictorian. He was just, he was a very smart student. And, uh, you know, he could sight read better than I could. So every year, my 10th, my 11th, and my 12th grade year, he always beat me. The only area, only time he did not beat me was our senior year. Uh, I got first alternate All-State and he didn't place. So that was the only year I beat him. And you know, I don't know if you people would identify with this, but he would see me and he'd be like, oh, where he go again? And I would see him, I'd be like, oh. Because, you know, he was always worried about me beating him, and I was always wanting it, wanted to beat him. I did end up beating him, but uh, it, he was he was a great player. We were in honor band uh, together, and, uh, and it was it was healthy competition. I don't want to make it sound like you know we didn't like each other because we did. He, he was just you know he was a great musician, so you know my hats off to him. Okay, we're going to continue story time. And I'm focusing in on my early musical development. I'll see you cats later.